Ron, and who is your guest? Either unmute and tell us or type it in chat. Your guest soloist. Uh, Mark uh, Deffenball. It's Monday morning in late summer, 1988. Last Sunday, our minister resigned in lieu of being fired. After the service, she assured me she would still recommend me for the final step in my licensed Unity teacher certification. Then a week later, and she just called me and said she won't recommend me because I didn't take her side against the board of trustees. I explained to her that I didn't take either side, rather I remained neutral. She said, licensed Unity teachers are required to support the minister and my being neutral was not supportive. I'm shocked, distraught, and furious because there's been a big mistake and she made it. Shaking, I pick up the phone and call Trish Robinson, the licensed Unity teacher representative at Unity Worldwide Ministries and tell her my story with all the drama I can muster. Her first words are, let's pray. Wow, what a novel idea, I think to myself. Her next words, I will never forget. Let's remember that we do not have to pray for divine order. Rather, we pray to see the divine order that is. I am dazed in my knowing 
that she is right. There is no mistake. Divine order is. And all is unfolding for my highest good. For the next two years, I put my focus on finishing my master's degree in counseling. Then with a new minister in place and with his recommendation, I complete the skills demonstration seminar and I am certified as a licensed Unity teacher. It's now 1991. I have caught a vision of being a Unity minister. I apply for seminary. I have all my tickets punched. I'm a licensed Unity teacher. I have a master's in counseling and I'm a licensed professional counselor. I've served on the board of trustees. I've given Sunday messages. I've taught Unity classes. And I'm, I've been given a strong recommendation by my minister. But wait, there's been a big mistake. I haven't received an invitation for an interview. My minister checks with Unity School and tells me I won't be receiving an invitation because they found the answers on my application insufficiently in-depth. At first, I'm stunned. Then Trisha's words from three years ago come back to me. Let's pray. And I remember, I do not have to pray for divine order. Rather, I have to pray to see the divine order that is. I know this doesn't mean I'm not supposed to be a unity minister. It only means that I'm not to go to seminary at this time. Fast forward three more years. Our ministers at Unity Santa Fe have accepted a position in a larger ministry and have given 30 days notice. Their last day will be November 30th, 1994. They recommend to the Board of Trustees that I be hired as spiritual leader. And the Board of Trustees asked me to be the new spiritual leader of Unity Santa Fe. And I remember, there are no mistakes. I am supposed to be Unity Santa Fe's minister. If I had gone to seminary, who knows where I would have wound up? Yes, indeed, divine order is. Our adventure in consciousness affirmation this week is, I see no mistakes. I see no mistakes. So if you are willing to put feet on this affirmation, please affirm aloud with yourselves muted, muted, I see no mistakes. So today's message will support you in seeing no mistakes. And the human condition is, guess what? Seeing mistakes. And I'm going to give you three guesses of what the spiritual solution is. Seeing no mistakes. How simple is that? So what we're being asked to do is to see beyond appearances. To see with spiritual eyes, not just human eyes. And I have a crying puppy, so I'm going to pick him up. He's, this is Makondo, he's my 16 year old and he's been having a rough few days. So, so I guess um, there's no mistake. So he's gonna help me give the message today. So what, one of the challenges we run into is resistance and resistance isn't helpful. And our awakened self knows this. It knows that all of life is perfectly unfolding. Or as quoted by John Tarrant in Ralph's writings, there's no flaw in the world. Your awakened self is your uh, divinity. 
your true self, the Christ, Buddha, Allah, Yahweh's spirit that is living you, breathing you, supporting, nourishing, and inspiring you. Your awakened self sees no mistakes. It has no complaint whatsoever. And it makes no demands of life to be different than life is. It simply accepts what is. One of my favorite quotes from A Course in Miracles is, those who see themselves as whole make no demands. It's our fallible, egoic self whoops, that sees mistakes, that complains, that makes demands that life be different than it is. So to me, the shoulds and shouldn'ts are complaints and demands. And as Ezra Baida says, we perpetuate our suffering through our attachment to life going a particular way. So when we argue with what is, those are our, that's what we do when we have shoulds and shouldn'ts, we put our egos in the driver's seat with the pedal to the metal, and we put ourselves out of alignment with our awakened self. And just like when the tires, oops, of our car are out of alignment, we may shimmy and shake as we fight with what is. When we're out of alignment, it's very difficult to keep on the straight and narrow as we are pulled to one side or the other and we're having to constantly adjust to that pull. Okay, I'm gonna put him in his bed, see how that goes. There you go, okay. So when we uh, let go of our complaints and demands, we quit seeing mistakes and our suffering falls away. We experience the peace of being relaxed with life. Our mental critic uh, dissolves into the nothingness from which it came. Our perspective widens and we may even be able to laugh at ourselves and our shoulds and shouldn'ts. So we go from that resistance to relaxation. I like to say it this way. When we let go of our complaints and demands, we shift from ugh to ah. So maybe you can remember that this week, to shift from ugh to ah. For me, being fully relaxed by accepting what is, is like being on one of those, uh, well, it's, it's like being on a, a ground level magic carpet ride, or maybe like riding on an invisible segway, you know, one of those sidewalk transportation devices. I feel I am going through life with effortless ease, grace, and joy. And that's a wonderful way to feel. Ralph writes that the first step to experiencing peace is to notice what's really behind your suffering and to be relaxed in that noticing. Being relaxed in that noticing reminds me of a coffee cup I have from Suzanne Giesman that says, isn't that interesting? It's another way to just say, oh, instead of making a demand blaming, criticizing. Isn't that interesting? Oh, Bill Harris says it this way. You will escape suffering only to the degree you are willing and able to let whatever happens be okay. My new meditation teacher, Shinzen Young, cites two of the hallmarks of spiritual wisdom. These two are, we suffer to the extent we multiply our discomfort 
with our resistance. So when we multiply discomfort at times resistance, we suffer to, that, to the extent we do that. And he says we experience fulfillment to the extent we multiply um, peace times equanimity or pleasure, actually pleasure times equanimity. And equanimity is mental calmness, composure, evenness of temper, especially in a difficult situation. So we can take that suffering caused by our discomfort and resistance, and we can quit doing that multiplication and do some maybe subtraction, and then begin to multiply that pleasure and equanimity so that we can experience fulfillment. So what would be in it for you if you chose fulfillment instead of suffering? I could have had fulfillment. Remember that old, I could have had a V8? Well, some of you are too young to remember that, but some of us do. Or as A Course in Miracles says, I could have peace instead of this. So imagine the soft self-talk and the gentle conversations with others. Imagine the fulfillment and harmony in your relationships with others and life. Imagine the physical and mental ease. Imagine living life on your own ground level magic carpet or invisible segue. Imagine having preferences and holding them lightly instead of having heavy held wrong making demands. You know, it's not about being a doormat. It's about having healthy boundaries. It's not about blaming and making others wrong. It's about realizing something isn't working. It's not about uh, ignoring or resigning ourselves to whatever is going on in the world. It's about taking action when we're moved to respond. But doing all of these from a place of seeing no mistakes. So just exactly how do we see no mistakes? Well, we know it's always prayer and meditation, first and foremost. So I invite you to prayerfully do the daily three-step practice in the PDF of Ralph's writings, and they're also included for those of you in Soul Circles in the Soul Circle Participant Guide. And I conveniently put those at the end of the Participant Guide so that you could, you know, really have them handy. This practice uh, is a lens through which we can see the untruth of the story. And when we see that there are no mistakes, we see that untruth, the story just falls away on its own. So throughout the day, when you're judging yourself or others seeming mistakes, just remember, and maybe even say, only my ego sees mistakes. My awakened self sees no mistakes. I'm going to say that again in case you want to write it down. Only my ego sees mistakes. My awakened self sees no mistakes. And the other thing you can do is wear blue next Sunday and add to the fifth chakra energy as we continue our ascent through the chakras. So I celebrate that we make this shift, that we shift from the ego seeing mistakes to seeing through the eyes of our awakened self and seeing that there are mistakes, that all is well, and we just may not have the rest of the picture yet. And let's begin seeing no mistakes now by being one together in a sacred time of shared prayer. So, Ring the bell.
And just take a moment to straighten the spine, relax the shoulders, relax the jaw, and settle into a comfortable position in this present moment. And now bring your attention into your body and find relaxation wherever you sense it. Or create re relaxation by relaxing any tense muscle or by focusing on the feeling of rest with, that comes with each exhale. And I invite you to continue practicing feeling rest as you hear the words of an excerpt of Ralph's poem that is a foundation for our Adventures in Consciousness series and for seeing no mistakes. Let us rest in the perfect peace of who we truly are. Beyond all stories of good or bad, right or wrong, praise or blame, loss or gain. And no belief that says life should be any different than it is. Why not then just relax? in the mysterious, eternal, knowing play of infinite awareness. The pure, unbridled awareness of indivisible love, where no problem, no mistake, can reside. Neither lack nor worry, no story rooted judgment or any suffering of any kind. For when we rest in absolute awareness, all thoughts that claim some life unfoldment is to us a disadvantage. We see clearly as misguided thinking. And with this we are freed and by the gift of spirit come to find ourselves awake, absent of all illusory fear, all imposter guilt, now newly birthed, we live afresh in the perfect peace of oneness, this ineffable not to of oneness, who we truly are. And let's know this individually and collectively in several minutes of silence.
And as we gently bring our attention back to our bodies, this time and place, silently say, thank you, divine awakened self for the wisdom to see no mistakes, no matter what. Thank you, divine awakened self. Thank you, thank you, thank you, that it is so, and so I am, and so it is. Amen. So now I'd like to welcome our first timers and invite you to um, email communications at unitysantafe.org if you would like to receive our, e our emails and know what's happening and all the details. Uh, and also would invite you to get in touch with me so that we can connect by phone or Zoom to get to know we each other. We want prosperity in our lives. We have to feel that prosperity right here, right now. And then we can magnify the feeling of joy and gratitude and we give back to the place where we receive our spiritual nourishment. Feeling this overwhelming joy in the now brings about the answered prayer. Now really, just I want you to close your eyes and just think about this for just a moment. You just received a refund you didn't expect or someone who has owed you money for a long time paid up out of the blue. Whatever that amount was, you're going to be so grateful, right? And you're going to thank divine source. Of course you are. And then you're going to infuse joy into that gratitude because that unexpected income just allowed you to bless Unity Santa Fe with 10% of whatever that was. Now, the Unity Worldwide Ministers web, Ministries website has an entire section devoted to generating unexpected income. You can feel free to explore that later. But for now, I want you to remember this unexpected income affirmation. I have more than enough to spare and to share and the wisdom to rightly use it. And one more time, say it with me, even though your mics are muted. I have more than enough to spare and to share and the wisdom to rightly use it. So it is. Thank you. As I give, so do I receive joyfully and gratefully. As I give, so do I receive fully. overflowing with unlimited abundance, all the needs of Unity Santa Fe and those we serve are bountifully met. 
from every direction, known and unknown, expected and unexpected, our abundant good comes to us now. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all I am, all I have, all I joyously give, and all I joyously receive. So I invite you to now light a virtual candle to remind you that you are the light of the world and to place it in a virtual bed of salt to remind yourself that you are the salt of the earth. 